This week I've been driving the new 2022 Buick Envision Avenir. The Envision is a two row, five passenger compact crossover that's based on the same platform as the Chevrolet Equinox and GMC Terrain. There's quite a bit to cover, so let's get started. Before we dive into this one, let's talk really quickly about the trims offered here. You have the preferred, the Essence, the Avenir, which is what we're driving, and now you also have an all-wheel drive sport touring edition. All right, let's talk about the exterior. All right, so first off, this is the Summit white paint, and I think it looks really good on here. It definitely accentuates those creases and body lines. Up front, we have a unique grille with blacked out chrome finishing and some bright chrome touches, and that's unique to this Avenir. We have really nice LED headlights, very premium looking jeweled headlights. Below those headlights on the Avenir are fake front vents but you do have a nice gap there in the front splitter. And the front splitter has this flat gray finishing to it that helps break up the colors there. Along the side, we're rocking brushed aluminum 20 inch wheels. These are a bit basic looking, not super premium looking. I would have liked something a bit more on the Avenir, but that's something that's always upgradable. You can also see on the side of the door, we do have that Avenir badge, as well as a chrome strip that goes from the front wheel to the rear. You also have bright chrome on the door handles and around the entire cabin. We've got body color side mirror caps. The side mirror does have integrated turn signals, but they're not power folding. In the rear, we have LED tail lights with a clear look to them, sort of like a late 90s, early 2000 Lexus look. You also have fake exhaust slots there. That doesn't really make this look super luxurious either a little bit cheap looking, but it's in fashion to do so. And then you got that same flat gray trimming on the rear skid plate, same as the front. Talking about the size of this vehicle, your total wheelbase is 109.4 inches. The full length is 182.5 inches. Your width is 74.1 inches and the height is 64.6 inches. All right, and with that, let's talk quickly about the hatch here. It is a power lifting hatch. There's a button back here on the back. There's a button inside. There's a button on the key fob. It is an adjustable height hatch, so you can adjust it to where it stops. And you have a good amount of space back here. So this is only a two row. We do have 25.2 cubic feet of cargo volume behind that second row. So that's plenty, plenty for grocery shopping, plenty for hauling my camera gear, whatever you wanna put back there. You've got the spare tire right here, not a full size spare, but it is a spare tire under this. Got some LED lights back here, and that's about it. Those rear seats are foldable, and with them folded, you get 52.7 cubic feet total of cargo volume. All right, and with that, let's close it up and uh, go pop the hood, check out what's under the hood. All right, so there is only one engine option here for the Envision, and that is a new two liter inline four turbocharged. It is a twin scroll turbo to help with turbo lag. It's matched up to a nine speed automatic transmission, and this will get you 228 horsepower, 258 foot pounds of torque. It comes standard and front wheel drive can be optioned to an all wheel drive. We have the front wheel drive here. And if you're thinking that that horsepower doesn't sound like a lot for a crossover, we'll talk about that as we get to drive it. But let's uh, close up the hood, jump in the back seats, talk about the interior, then we'll take it for a drive, and then we'll wrap up the video talking about the price, competition, and some of my final thoughts. Let's keep rolling. All right, guys, so we're here in the rear seats of the Envision. There's no forward and backwards movement of these, and there's no adjustment of the angle that you sit. You do have a, you do have a nice armrest pull down here with some cup holders. They are heated seats back here. You do have USB type C and USB type A charging ports, as well as a house type plug back here. Material wise, the materials are just as nice as the front. Size wise, kids had no problems back here. Obviously me, a 6'1 adult, a little bit tight, a little bit tight on the head. Of course, we've got this panoramic sunroof 
It allows me a little bit more headroom. Uh, knees are just scraping the seat and I didn't adjust. This is just where uh, my wife or kids sit when they ride with me. But yeah, a decent amount of room back here for this crossover, but let's jump into the front seat, talk about the tech and the interior up here, and we'll continue rolling. All right, guys, and let's start off talking about the interior that we have here, which is the Whisper Beige with Ebony. We have really beautiful white seats with the Avenir logo stitched in there. They're perforated, they're nice stitching here, super comfortable heated seats, massaging seats. Again, just super comfortable and nice. And the nice materials extend on. We've got some nice materials here on the door. Again, stitching. And this little wood trim piece with the intricate little uh, details there looks really premium and looks really good. And then we move along to the dash, and this is just one huge black uh, rubbery piece. It is a soft touch, so it's not like a hard touch, but uh, it's not super attractive or luxurious looking. And of course we have the 10.25 inch touchscreen display, your infotainment display. Let's kick it on and start looking at this. And like I said, I do like this 10.25 two inch display. The uh, base Envision gets an eight inch display, but this Avenir gets that 10.2 inch and it's super responsive. The GM infotainment system is a bit not luxurious, I guess you could say, but you do have navigation built in. You also have Apple CarPlay, including wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Right down here in the console, you do have the uh, USB Type-C and USB Type-A charging ports and a wireless charging pad. So you can wirelessly charge your phone as well as wirelessly have it hooked up to CarPlay. You've got a physical volume knob. This is like a track select and your home button. Next is your vents right here and then your AC and heat controls. And then a few buttons down here. You've got your automatic start stop off feature, your lane detect button, your traction control off button, your parking assist button, and parking sensors button. So this does have a parallel park assist feature, something I don't often use because we live in the suburbs and it's not needed. You can see we do have the electronic shifter here. So we have our park button, which is a push into park, pull back for reverse. We do have a reverse camera but you also have a 360 view, which is really nice. And then you got push in for neutral, pull back for drive, and a push in for a manual. We also have the electronic parking brake here, a mode select, which will select your driving modes, and obviously cup holders. Next up is our center armrest, which is kind of rough for an armrest, but not terrible. You do have nice stitching there. It opens up like that. It's a pretty decent depth here. You can, put, you can put some stuff in there, maybe like a smaller tablet, definitely not a laptop or anything. Camera could probably fit in there as well. Moving along to the steering wheel, it is a leather wrap steering wheel with white stitching. You've got your different controls here on the steering wheel, paddle shifters behind and some buttons behind for your volume and track settings for your radio. Behind the steering wheel is your driver information display, which is digital in the middle and two analog gauges on the either side. And you can obviously flip through different pages here to see different things on your information display. And we also have a nice big head up display that will show you a lot of different information as well, which I do like and is a great feature of this vehicle. We also have the rear view mirror that can be shown as the rear view camera, which is a nice feature. And of course that panoramic sunroof there. Which is nice and big, goes all the way to the rear seats. Obviously sunroof just opens here for the front and you just got a moonroof for the back. But let's talk about my biggest gripe with this interior right now. All right, so I do think the Envision Avenir does have a nice interior, lots of good materials, 
and it fits in about where it should. It's better than you would get with the Equinox, but not as good as you would get with a uh, Cadillac or something like that. It's a good blend of saving money and having a nice looking interior. My biggest gripe with this interior is this cockpit-like uh, design that the interior has. So it definitely folds in for a nice cockpit for the driver. But if you're a family and you've got somebody sitting in the passenger seat, uh, it's actually even hard to see the display, let alone adjust anything on it. So if this crossover was built for families, I don't understand why they would do that. It's more of a sporty feel, but this is not a sporty SUV. And we'll talk more about that as we drive it, which let's go ahead and get it out on the road. All right, guys, let's get this thing out on the road. Now it is a comfortable drive, as you might expect from a Buick. It's uh, pretty quiet for the price point that it's at. We'll talk about the price here in just a minute, but it's definitely not a bad vehicle to drive at all. And with the cockpit design that I uh, don't necessarily like, it does form well for the driver. Everything's easy to touch. Everything's easy to get to. And if you're the only one in this vehicle and you're driving, it's a nice place to be. Steering wheel is nice. Seating position is nice. These seats, heated seats, cooled seats, massaging seats, super good. But of course, if you're driving it with your wife or your wife drives this and you're in it, uh, the cockpit design makes less sense for a crossover vehicle in my opinion we'll come up to some turns here and see how this does brakes are good turn in there's some good body roll but that's probably a good thing manage your speed better when you start feeling some body roll but it does well and it can kick out of course we do have that sport mode so let's put it into sport mode You've got the little display up here that tells you it's in sport mode and a little checkered flag down there. And again, that gives us a little bit more oomph out of that two liter engine. Again, into the corners and out. Do you have the paddle shifters back here? never use them not needed at all hard on the brakes for this corner again brakes are good turn in power out it's a bit wobbly not super fast but this is not a sport crossover so if you're looking for that you're definitely looking in the wrong market it is good with fuel economy though. You're looking at 21 miles per gallon city, 31 on the highway. During our full week with this thing, we've been averaging 18.7. I know that's not great. We leave the car idle as we're taking pictures and video of the thing. So it's not a good representation of what you would get. I definitely see you getting around those numbers, especially if you're not hard on the throttle. Besides that sport mode, we also have a snow and ice mode. Now this is only a front wheel drive, not the all wheel drive, but you do have that snow and ice mode. So it'll help with some traction management there. And then of course you have your tour, which is your comfort, your everyday mode, which is basically what I kept it on for the entire week, except for when it was actually icy. I did have it on that snow ice mode. Don't know if it really did anything, but uh, I managed to get to the grocery store and back. Let's get up on the highway here at about 14 miles an hour, punch it. Sixty and up to 70. So you can get up to speed just fine to get onto the highway, passing people, no issues. So you only have that 225 horsepower, 228 horsepower. 
it's not a lot, but it's decent for this vehicle, especially coming out of a turbocharged two cylinder engine. Once you're up on the highway, we can engage the uh, radar guided cruise control here. So it'll keep us a distance from whoever we're uh, behind. You also have lane keeping assist, which kind of nudges you back and forth, but doesn't really keep you in the center of the lane. So it's definitely not a hands-off feature. It's really just a safety feature. And of course, Buick has a lot of other safety features in this vehicle. But with that, of course, there's no point in doing like a zero to 60. Again, this is not a sports uh, crossover. And we basically covered most of the safety features and tech in this vehicle. Let's go ahead and pull back over. We'll talk about the price and competition, and then we'll start wrapping the video up. All right, guys, now that we got some driving out of the way, let's start wrapping this thing up, talking about the price and competition out there. First off, the base price for the Envision Avenir is $39,850. This one as equipped is just over $45,000. So it's a pretty good price, but when you start looking at some of the competition, it falls just about in range of what you would think it should be. Competition, you're looking at the Acura MDX or even RDX. If you're looking at something sporty and tacky, the Acura is really good. You also have the Infiniti QX50 or QX55. Both of those really good, luxurious, super nice designs. I've got videos on basically all of these. If you're interested, I'll try to leave links in the description. And then you have the Lincolns, which I haven't driven, but look pretty good. And if you're going with just the straight competitors, that's about all you have. Obviously, you can jump into other things like top-end Volkswagens or top-end Hyundai or Kias, which interior-wise are just as nice, tech-wise are just as feature-packed, and looks-wise are just as good. But with that, let me jump out and I'll give you some of my final thoughts on this vehicle, and we'll wrap up the video there. All right, guys, and after a full week of driving the Envision for the first time, I'm left a little confused. I'm not exactly sure who this is meant to be for. Buick's biggest demographic is women here in the United States, but their biggest demographic is the Chinese and the Chinese market. They sell about 40,000 of these here in the U.S., but they sell 140,000 in the Chinese market, which is crazy stupid. I think it's a great vehicle. It's a great looking vehicle. The inside is pretty nice. My biggest hiccup there is that cockpit dash like I talked about. And definitely as a family man, I couldn't get over that. Even if I'm not packing this full with the family, this definitely wouldn't be my go-to for even a small family. I would definitely look at the Enclave, which looks just as good and has a better interior for families, even if you're not using that third row. And if you don't have a family, but you want something bigger than the Encore or Encore GX, this will probably fit you pretty well, but you're using such a big vehicle for what reason, I'm not sure. Again, I don't have anything against the Envision. I think it's a good looking vehicle. It was nice to drive for the whole week. Just something to think about if you're in the market for it. Definitely get in it, drive it, and see how you feel. If you've got a family, see how they feel about sitting in the passenger seat with that cockpit design. But with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Envision. Hit the thumbs up button. If you did enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel. We do a different review every week. Also go check out txgarage.com for more written reviews, events, and news coverage from a lot of great authors over there. And with that guys, thanks for watching.